Hi everyone. My name is Edie Graziani and I am an author from Hamilton. I'm also a teacher librarian. I write young adult but I also write um, uh, women's fiction. Uh, today I'm going to be uh, reading from one of my books. I actually have two books published with uh, Second Story Press. So one is uh, War in My Town and the other one is uh, Breaking Faith. Uh, and if you go to the um, um, if you go to the Second Story Press website, you can get more information on each. Both have a teacher guide and, and downloadable um, lesson plans. So if you would like to uh, check that out. But today I'm going to be reading from Breaking Faith, and I'm going to be reading starting from the prologue. So here we go. Breaking Faith. The two plainclothes police officers park their so-called inconspicuous black car, get out, and look up at the shabby roof of the townhouse unit across from ours. Spring rain clouds droop over the city like twisted blankets, releasing their first drops just as the pair reach the front door. One of them is young with blonde hair and a buzz cut. The older veteran cops a little paunchy with graying hair. Both are wearing light jackets which cover their bulletproof vests. These images are the first memories I have. Vividly seared into my mind, barely being four years old and tall enough to rest my chin on the windowsill. The memories remain with me to this day because I watched the whole thing go down from my upstairs bedroom window. The young one is the first to step on the landing and is reaching for the screen door when a discharge loud enough to rattle my window splits the air. A gaping hole is blasted through the front door. One round hits the pane above me and sprays me with glass. The cop with the bus cut falls to the steps, dead before he hits the ground. I scream as blood trickles warmly into my eye. Doors, windows and shutters begin to slam shut around the complex. The veteran jerks back shot in the left arm, but he draws his gun fast enough to get a round off through the glass inlay and then throws himself over the railing onto some long forgotten decorative urns. The shooting stops. I keep screaming. I feel hands grab my shoulders, dragging me away from the window, throwing me down. Someone lies on top of me, shielding my face. I hear gun blasts and pops and now sirens in the distance. I keep screaming. Sinbad in the house across the street. Yes, his name was Sinbad, like the guy who sailed the seven seas. Firing his semi-automatic at the two cops from the other side of the door was higher than a kite on crystal meth. Sinbad gets shot right in the chest. At least that's what all the kids in the neighborhood said afterward. I didn't see it because my mother had pushed me to the ground and had thrown herself over me. In the following months, I have to sleep with mama because I wake up with night terrors. Darkness comes over me like a shroud and stays for a long time. And I think I'll never feel happiness again. For a long time, I refuse to leave my mother's side. I have headaches and my stomach hurts and I pee the bed. Mama takes me to a doctor and he says that I should see a therapist. But it takes us three buses to get there. Mama and I go twice and then she gives up and says she'll help me grow out of it. Does anyone ever grow, outgrow something like that? It may ebb and flow, but go away? Nah, not thinking so. I chose to start my story here because it is the pivotal point, the hinge in my door, the fulcrum in the balance. This is the beginning and this is, and the beginning of the end for me. So this is a story about a uh, faith who's had a really rough start in life. Um, it's a gritty story, uh, and the story starts in her earliest days before her family falls apart and before her mother leaves. The determination to find love and comfort that lures Faith to drugs is ultimately the same stubborn force that can drive her to recover. Thank you.